Hello everybody out there. Welcome to the Field of Streams where I, your host, Janine McRae, bring you the tiny thoughts that stream from my brain and present them to you as though they're a Cheeto's chapstick that you twist to reveal a giant Cheeto to nibble on, one that you can recap and keep for snack emergencies, thus keeping all Cheeto dust and your desire for monosodium glutamate off your fingers. Mmm. FD&C Yellow 6. Now, I can't promise you much with these snacticles, but I can promise you this. I won't keep you long. No, really. Folks, you know what's not an inspiring word? Cancer. Inspiring is a word that fills you with excitement and curiosity and a sense of can-do. Cancer is a word that fills you with absolute fucking terror. Terror is a word. Fear is another word. And terror fear is a third made-up word that describes the two previous words when they snuggle in an adult way and create a baby called shit scared. Okay, let's try a different word. Melanoma. Yeah, same effect. Ugh, so why am I talking about that? Well, on February 9th, 2022, so back when I was 50... I'm now, I finally admitted to myself that a mole on my back did not look like it used to, and I actually went to a doctor. Anyone that knows me knows that I'm not a doctor-going person, so this was quite a thing, me actually going. Then a very quick series of events occurred, because the next thing you know, the word melanoma was drifting in and out of my brain, and 13 days after the discovery of the word melanoma on my back, which is not really a word, it was a mole, um, there was a surgical blade being stuck into my back to escort it from the skin premises, followed by discussions about how vigilance is my new best friend, and okay, Janine... Let's just get to the story. Stop being so fucking dramatic. Am I being dramatic? I don't know. I think I'm just telling it as it is. (laughs) But a quick note before I fire up my sonorous voice and read this to you. I'm fine. I continue to be fine. I, and all the dermatologists I encounter, will be eyeing my 80s in Australia no sunscreen, no ozone layer skin with suspicion for the rest of of my life, which, as an aside, I hope is a long and cancer-free life. And I tell you this not as a way to perhaps get a nice note from a stranger, but instead to make a plea, here goes. Listeners, get your skin checked regularly. If something looks strange, a mole or even a weird red thing that doesn't look like a mole but maybe wasn't there before and suddenly is, get it checked out. Wear sunscreen. A good one. A reef safe one. Treat yourself to a really good hat. A natty one. I bought a great forever hat from a hat maker in the Mojave who made it for me. It's loosely based on the one Bob Dylan wore during the Rolling Stone Thunder Review. Get a good hat, people. One that you want to wear. One that you will wear. One that people, when they see you on the street, say, Nice hat. That's happened to me many times. Okay, no more waffle. This is the story of a day when years of Australian teenage sunburn finally caught up with Janine McRae. Sit back, relax, go get a skin check, though after you've listened to this, and allow me to read to you a piece of my writing called Cut, Putting the Wide in Wide Local Incision. As luck would have it, I received my melanoma diagnosis on the morning of what I later read was World Cancer Day. I mean, of course I did. I'm a joiner. I jumped to it and waved my sign. Is there a chant for it? I'm in. What do we want? Melanoma. When do we want it? Now. Hmm. Not to be a critic, but that needs some work. You might not find the above funny, and neither do I. But when I get the news early on a Friday morning, the jokes start right away. One must refuse to make eye contact with one's terror. If you don't joke, you choke. Or something. This stage is called denial. 
aka the truth avoidance stage, aka the let's watch an entire season of something on Netflix and pretend this isn't happening stage. The actor is on stage, and I don't know how to act. List. Reduce coffee intake. Brush teeth after every meal. Water plants regularly. No overnight dishes in the sink. Delete Facebook. Make a will. You don't have a will? No, Michael, I don't. You should have a will. Weirdly, or coincidentally, I guess, my brother and I had had this discussion about making a will prior to this week's issue of the Melanoma Gazette dropping onto my driveway. As I FaceTimed with him to share the I don't want you to panic, but I should tell you about my melanoma news. The word will blinked on my to-do list. I should have a will. Not that this stupid mole is going to be the thing to take me out. I'm taking it out first, but I am going to die eventually, and I should have a will. I'm 50 years old and with more behind me than in front, and I think someone should get my records when I die. 30 years from now. I keep meaning to do it. I'd told him at the time, making my usual excuses. Meaning to. Meaning to. Does one find meaning in meaning to? This big thought drifts in and fogs up the glass of the proceedings. How's your new tractor, I ask, changing the subject and clearing the air. We flip our conversation cassette over to side B. I am still spooling. I tell a handful of people about my melanoma, my dark and moody emo mole, the squatter in the centre of my back, right between my shoulder blades. They have to twist and contort to see it in the mirror, but it's absolutely there. It's like the right-wing domestic terrorist in his garage who's made the homemade bomb but doesn't know what to do with it. This is what I say. This is how I explain it to people. What a quip. What wit, what a hot bon mot. I put it this way because I can't help myself with trying to market things correctly, plus it seems a fitting description for the lurking menace and its unexploded ordinance. This mole is slowly expanding outside the perimeter of its assembly desk on my skin, but it has yet to explore territory outside its current domicile. It is lazy invasive. Melanoma in situ, as they officially label it in my initial medical report. Still incredibly dangerous, but contained fully within its own garage, with the fuse lit and the roller door closed. It has yet to write its manifesto. I'm so glad you came in when you did. We've caught it early. These are words that drift into my brain. They don't set off any alarms. Yet. I push anxiety to the corner and try to dispel the worry I hear in the voices of those I tell. I am positively cheerful about it. Until I'm not. A few texts from friends start to nibble at the edge of my denial cocoon. Do you need anything, says one? How can I help, says another. Help? Why would I need help? Need anything? What would I need? On a whim, I Google some no-context terms I find in my medical report. One scary search rabbit hole, some distressing YouTube videos, a sleepless night, and... Oh. This is a thing. Oh. Fuck. I have skin cancer on my back. I have melanoma. Joke? Struth! Could I be more of a walking, I love a sunburnt country Australian cliche right now? List. Meditate twice a day. Drink green tea. Tend to my gut garden. Vitamin D supplements. Stay on top of my finances. Less TV, more life. Get rid of unimportant stuff. Recognise the difference between having a purpose and living with purpose. Stop making lists. Do. Do not delay. Some people turn into vampires. This is what my dermatologist tells me a week after I learn of my garage lurker. The way of the vampire. Big hats, sunglasses, umbrellas, only going out at night. This is just one reaction upon hearing a melanoma diagnosis. 
there are other non-vampiric options, or perhaps just different degrees of embracing vampire life. I will look into this. She examines my arms, notes the faint winter tan line, and tuts. I explain that I'm what people would call an avid cyclist, and that it's been unseasonably warm lately. Warm enough to peel arm protection off while riding. Secretly, I'm breathing a sigh of relief that it's February, and she's not seeing the full nuke of summer cycling on my skin. What sort of sunscreen do you use? Uh, whatever's in the bathroom. Well, it's not good enough. The inspection continues. Other potential terrorists are put on my no-fly list for interrogation at a later date after this current drama is over. I look out the window to the Scotts Valley parking lot as she tells me the origin story and star sign of each of my moles. I hope this is one-way glass. We've caught it early, she says later, explaining what will happen with my exorcism procedure. She doesn't call it an exorcism, but what else can it be? We must rid my flesh of this awful blight. Chant to our gods to release me of my burden. Get the good holy scalpel anointed with the righteous holy excision oil and forcibly remove this interloper. We say it and it shall be done. Be gone, evil one. Hallelujah! And all that jazz. List. Buy sunscreen. Learn a language. Write a song. Play it. Sing it. We send the feds into the garage on a Wednesday. It is a doctor in San Jose who kicks the door in, explaining before he does so that there'll be a scar about yay big. The gap between his thumb and index finger seems eye-bogglingly large. It is a fall-down gap, which looks, in Fish Was This Big scale, to be about 10 centimetres to me. But that can't be right, can it? We've caught it early, he says, trying to soothe my nerves. What a team we are. Team Mole Catcher, the early squad. What happens to my little friend after this, I ask, my head face down on the examination table as he hacks away at it. I imagine my little friend being hurled viciously into the flames of wicked retribution, of it burning to a fiery crisp in a malevolent flesh disposal furnace with a heavy steel door and the glow of destruction in its heart. But no... It's going to the lab for testing, he says. Oh, of course, that makes sense. Like any good and misunderstood terrorist, it gets to be interviewed. Yes, we should all hear its side of the story so that we may empathise with its plight. Cryon reads, Misunderstood melanoma. Quote, I was only trying to grow. End quote. The tug of stitching begins, and as I lay there with a surgical drape over my head and the coolness of the air on my exposed back... I think back to earlier in the day, before the doctor came in and I sat anxiously on the surgical bed while being prepped by the nurse. Or is she called an assistant? I'm not sure. I love your boots! She'd paused mid-clipboard checklist to look me over, and I turned my foot to give her a better look at them. She'd nodded as I'd rambled on about these being my favourite boots, as if they mattered at all today. Nodding, she turned away to get my sexy gown for me. You look so cute today! Prep talk became pep talk. I smiled beneath my mask. You know, I don't even care if that's something she says to everyone who is about to get cancer cut off them. I don't care if she was lying and only saying it to make me feel good on an anxious day. I do look cute today. Let's delete this lunatic on my back. It's messing up my vibe. List. Read widely and voraciously. Listen to music every day. Write letters, not emails. Make a poem. Live a poem. Be good. Do good. Breathe. I don't have anything special to say here. No tips for getting ideas. No knowledge to drop. No zingers. But let me say this and be done with it. Drifting back into old habits is too easy. We slide down our slippery slopes and back onto the comfy couches of do nothing with little resistance. For me, it's time to pit on this slope, hang on, and keep climbing. Change for me is not to be found in that couch. Don't they have sun sleeves for cycling, my dermatologist asks. The couch calls. 
I ignore its velvety pleas to plant my old self back into its plump cushion. Yes, yes they do. Whatever, I don't care. I'm going to make them sexy. And if you don't think they're sexy, screw you. Because from this point on, I'm just trying to move on through life as painlessly as I can for as long as I can. And if you think those sleeves are sexy, just wait until you see my new wide-brimmed hat. It's official. My journey to part eccentric old lady, part sexy sunsafe vampire has now commenced. On Wednesday, I had a melanoma on my back. Today, I don't. Recognise when you get second chances. Chant your mantras. Make your changes. Surround yourself with love. Oh, and get your skin regularly checked for terrorists. And there you have it, today's episode. There were a bunch of footnotes in this one, but I'm only going to call out one in this reading. I mention... I love a sunburnt country as an example of me being a walking Australian cliché. That's a reference to a Dorothea McKellar poem, My Country, which is one of Australia's most beloved poems. It isn't about a good sunburn, but rather about a love for Australia. I remember singing this stanza in choir at school, though I'm not going to sing it to you now, sorry. It goes like this. I love a sunburnt country. A land of sweeping plains, of ragged mountain ranges, of droughts and flooding rains. I love her far horizons, I love her jewel sea, her beauty and her terror, the wide brown land for me. There's that word again, terror. Get your skin checked, boot all melanomas to the curb, have them arrested, get them on a no-fly list, all that stuff. Stay safe. I love you all. And let me just say my regular wrap-up to, uh, well, wrap it up, I guess. <clears throat> I hope you'll come back and listen to more episodes of Field of Streams. That is the first and last time I will talk about melanoma, she says, touching wood. These missives are designed to inspire creative folk to get out there and make something of their own. And by that I mean the fact that I just share writing that I whip out in four hours every week to show you that you've just got to keep producing. That's that's what I mean. See how easy it is? I'm an idiot and I'm doing it. You can do it. Whether it's writing, poetry, well, that is writing, Janine. Yes, uh, songs, uh, painting, making art, building things, dancing, whatever it is, whatever your art is, just keep making it. Because you don't know how long you've got. It's a bit dark. Sorry. Anyway, uh, if you enjoyed what you heard today, <laughs> enjoyed. You know what? I'm just going to leave it there. Love what you love. I'll see you out there making stuff. Hopefully for a very long time. Bye.